Good evening and welcome to this month's UK Crime Book Club Pub Quiz. Just not, of course, in a pub, but played out on the World Wide Web for all you wonderful people at home to see. And speaking of wonderful people, I have with me two fantastic authors from our group. And I'm thrilled to say we have a battle of the teachers, uh, one former and one current teacher, that is. Uh, on my, well, they're both on my left today. Uh, on my furthest left is, uh, is Andrew French, a.k.a. A.S. French the author behind the DI Gem Flowers and Ashby Snow Thrillers. Andrew, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, how, how are you feeling going into tonight's quiz? Uh, confident? Nervous. Nervous. Nothing to Nervous. be afraid of. Long time since I've done a pub quiz. Well, there is nothing to lose here but pride. and uh, well, That's what I'm nervous about. <laughs> so that's why I'm never nervous, because I haven't got much to lose. Uh, and, and in the middle there, sandwiched between the pair of us, is Chris McDonald author of the D.I. Erica Piper series and the Stonebridge Mysteries, and of course a regular voice on the Blood Brothers podcast uh, with Sean Coleman and Rob Parker. Chris, are you aware that you're setting the bar for the other guys from the pod? Because we're going to have them on and we're going to obviously keep a track on how all of you do. Well, I reckon I could take them. I'm throwing down the gauntlet now. That's Go in with confidence and then look stupid after is my motto. Well, that it's always been my motto, actually. Yeah, it's, it's a good motto to live by. Um, while people are joining us in the chat, I know um, there's been the Rosemary Schrager interview tonight, so we'll give everyone a chance to join us in the group. Uh, I will run through the rules for those of you who are doing this for the first time. So, we have five rounds of five questions. You write your answers down at home on a piece of paper or using a word processor. It matters a lot, as long as you don't blurt them out in the chat. At the end of each round, me and my guests will go through the answers. You're all in charge of marking your own scores. Please, no cheating. I've hacked all your webcams. I can see what you're doing. And frankly, some of you, it's disgusting. <laughs> At the end of the quiz, I'll ask my two guests for their scores, for the ultimate in prizes, which, of course, is that wonderful feeling of self-worth that you can only get from besting an opponent. You can put your scores in the chat if you want, if you're playing along at home. Uh, but, of course, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. We will give everyone a couple more seconds before we begin with round one. Let's just uh, do say hello in the chat. It's always nice to know who's joining us. There might be some lag with people joining as the uh, first interview goes, but we will be beginning ourselves now. Is everyone happy? Gentlemen, are you all ready? Yes. Excellent. Ready. As we have been. Of course, is books. This, after all, is a book club, folks. And I'm too lazy to think of a better opener. Five questions on bound sheets of pulped wood adorned with symbols in an effort to convey a greater meaning coming right up. Question number one. Which American author announced his return this week after a 16-year absence with not one but two new books, The Passenger and Stella Maris? For those playing along at home, I'll be posting these questions in the chat and I will be repeating myself as well. Which disappeared off screen, he's oh, he's not on Google. No. <laughs> yeah, right. There's my answer. There's my first answer. Yeah, got that first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't quite. This is no idea. idea. I will repeat that first question for those. Remember, no shouting out in the chat if you join in us at home. Which American author announced his return this week after a 16 year absence? We've not one but two new books The Passenger and Stella Maris. Question number two. A rare copy of which novel by James Joyce was recently found in a charity shop and could fetch £800 at auction? Number two again. A rare copy of which novel by James Joyce was recently found in a charity shop and could fetch £800 at auction? Question number three. Now, regular viewers to the quiz, as I'm sure you all are, will know that we often pick a couple of qu uh, questions from our newsletter that goes out at the start of every month. And this one is no exception. MK Farrar releases her new book, March the 17th, so a week today. Featured in our newsletter, which you all read, it's the latest in her Detective Ryan Chase series. But with what high street shop does the new book share its name? So you, 
who thinks logically? If I don't actually know, we'll see who actually thinks logically. And there. Uh, finds the clue. Can MK you repeat that one, please? Yes, absolutely. MK Farrar releases her new book on March the 17th. It's the latest in her Detective Ryan Chase series. But with high, what high street shop does the new book share its name? There is a clue in the question. That's how generous I am, guys. I mean, if you had any worries about the quiz, I, I, I'd try and give you the answers. <laughs> question number four. World Book Day in the UK and Ireland, yes, I know, took place earlier this month. But on what day is UNESCO World Book Day celebrated? Mm. Pretty sure this was probably a question in last March's quiz. Not that I like to repeat myself or have no originality. <laughs> Question four again. World Book Day in the UK and Ireland took place earlier this month. But on what day is the UNESCO World Book Day celebrated? And finally for this round. Who is the author behind Where the Bodies Are Buried? And which was released on February the 24th this year and was in our newsletter. And features ex-copper Frank Walker trying to clear his name after falling under suspicion for the disappearance of his neighbour and the death of her husband. Again, one for those of you reading the newsletter. Who is the author behind Where the Bodies Are Buried, released February 24th of this year, and features ex-copper Frank Walker trying to clear his name after falling under suspicion for the disappearance of his neighbour and the death? Her husband. There, are the questions for round number one. They are in the chat. How are we feeling, gents? Is that round loose in the old grey matter there? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad for one of the uh, questions. That's all I can say. Excellent stuff. Right. Um, we will get straight to the answers on this one. We'll give everyone a quick chance to, to catch up. But we will begin by answering question number one. So, number one. Did anyone have an idea who the American author was who announced his return? Cormac McCarthy. It was indeed. Yes, 16 years since he last released the book, which was the quite haunting The Road. Cormac McCarthy returns with The Passenger in October and Stella Maris in November. The Passenger first came to light in 2009 when notes were found in one of his archives for a novel with that title. One of the novels was delivered eight years ago and has been sat on since then, and both were tied into the other. Uh, the passenger follows salvage diver Bobby, and Stella Maris follows his sister Alicia, a math prodigy. So there you go, that's uh, Cormac McCarthy was the answer there, and not all the waffle I gave you afterwards. Question number two. Did anyone know the uh, book, the James Joyce book that was found in the charity shop? I had a punt on Ulysses. It was a so, good punt. It was a very good punt. Yes, a 1936 special edition of James Joyce's Ulysses was donated to Tenova's Cancer Care in Cardiff. It's numbered 766 of 900 copies and originally had been put on sale for a pound. Thankfully, they didn't sell it for a pound. Um, no one knows who donated the book. However, two courtsmen for possession of firearms in 1946 were found inside the book. So maybe they will eventually trace the owner that way. <laughs> Question three. Did anyone pick up on the clue for the name of the new Detective Ryan Chase book? I think... <laughs> Go on, gents. I think you're right, yeah. I didn't hear what you said, sorry. I guess Paper Chase. It is Paper Chase, indeed. As per the stationery store that I always go to just before my wife's birthday. Uh, the other book in this, books in the series are Chase Down and Kill Chase. So, uh, question four. UNESCO World Book Day. Did anyone know? No. no. It's celebrated on April the 23rd, the day chosen to mark the death of Cervantes, Shakespeare, and Inca Garcilaso de la Vega, uh, who all passed on the same date, April the 23rd, 1616. Now, here's the chance for... I'll give you two bonus points if you can uh, tell me why that isn't technically correct. You can shout it out in the chat. 
I've got I've no idea. Well, the reason is Spain and England used different calendars at the time. Mm -hmm. So Spain was on the Gregorian, England the Julian, and Shakespeare, despite dying on the same date, actually died 10 days after Cervantes. <laughs> that is a proper pub quiz bore answer there for you. And finally, <laughs> who was the author of Where the Bodies Are Buried? I I don't think it is, but Chris Brookmeyer has a book called Where the Bodies Are Buried, but I don't think his was so, as recent, is it? It's not. Andrew, do you have a, an inkling? I think it might have been me. It was you, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> That's the wrong way around, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, was very unfair to Chris, though, that question. It was, wasn't it? Yes. I, I, hope, uh, I hope the rest of the quiz continues in this manner. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live up in the North East, so I've got to give you a you know a little little bit of a favouritism. This, um, this is true, uh, uh, Andrew. A perfect opportunity there to talk a little bit about the book. Um, yeah, recently came out uh, last month. Tell us all about it. Uh, what's that question? Um, it is actually based um, partly on on where I used to live, and I had to change the, the names of places and, and people, you know, for legal reasons. No, that's not true. Um, but it's set, in, it's set in the northeast. Most of my other books, uh, or crime books, have been set uh, in London since it was easier to write about somewhere that I don't live. Um, so this is set around where I live on the coast. Um, so it um, was interesting to, to put some descriptions of locations in of, of places and, and, and things that happened to me when I was younger, but which have been exaggerated completely since I never found any dead bodies or I never killed anybody or anything like that. Now, that sounds like a, a, a very, very earnest plea there that you definitely didn't kill anybody. <laughs> I know. I'm, get, I'm getting the defence in now while I've got witnesses. <laughs> Super stuff. And um, Chris, you've not long released your latest novel, All at Sea, which was the sixth book in the Stonebridge series, uh, mystery series. Want to tell us about that one as well? Yes. Um, it feels like an age since I actually wrote it. Um, it's about um so it's the sixth in the series like you say um it's two amateur sort of 25 year old sleuths who have watched too much sherlock and fancy themselves as a bit of a detective duo and um they're on a ship bound for adam's wedding in um italy and they get caught up in a sort of uh, heist someone steals a painting and they have to try and figure out who gets it um yeah, it was a lot of fun to write and uh, hopefully to read. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Gents, super stuff. Um, yeah, two books from our, our two authors there that have recently just hit the press. So uh, you guys should be at home, should be uh, popping open the side window here and uh, having a quick quick look at um, old Jeff Bezos' website and see what you can find. Shall we crack on to our two folks? Yes. Yeah, it. Um, it is, of course, Mother's Day later this month, and my mum has already appeared in the chat. So, hi, mum. This is your gift. <laughs> Uh, what better way to celebrate Mother's Day than run a tenuous round in a niche online pub quiz? <laughs> I've got five questions loosely based around mothers, uh, and I'm going to ask you to tell me the answers. Turn that message thing off. Question number one. What was the name of Frank Zappa's band? Question one again. What was the name of Frank Zappa's band? Uh, and Dad, that's your Father's Day gift because that's the point you guys playing a lot at home. Ticked all the boxes today. Save himself a ton of money. Question number two. What is the name of the book by Robert Block and later the film by Alfred Hitchcock in which Norman Bates takes on the personality of his deceased mother to kill women who he's attracted to? Mm. And in case anyone's been confused, the book and the film are the same name. Just in case that's throwing a red herring for anyone. But it's just one answer we're after there. Question two again. What is the name of the book by Robert Block and later the film by Alfred Hitchcock? Same name. In which Norman Bates takes on the personality of his deceased mother to kill women who he's attracted to. Question three. The most powerful non-nuclear weapon in the American arsenal is the GBU 43B MOAB, Massive Ordnance Air Blast. Large, large yield bomb developed for the US military. I could sell these. But what 
else has Moab colloquially come, become to stand for? Come to stand for, should I say? <laughs> and, I mean, think about the round we're doing here, guys. It's in there. Question number three again. The powerful non nuclear weapon in the uh, American arsenal is the GBU 43B MOAB. It's a great name, isn't it? Massive ordnance air blast. But what else has MOAB globally come to stand for? These are great questions, Donna Morfit. Great questions. <laughs> Welcome to the quiz. Great to have you here. You won't get these on any of your crime book clubs. <laughs> Question four. Mother Teresa was born in Ushkup, a city in the Ottoman Empire. But by what name do we now know that city today? I'm just recalling before the quiz started, I, I was having a chat with um, Andrew and Chris, and I was saying, I think this is the easiest quiz I've done for a long time. <laughs> and I'm listening to the questions I've written, and I'm thinking, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I think you say this to everybody. Yeah, I do, and every month I sit there reading out the questions. Go. <laughs> Question Thor. Mother Teresa was born in Ushka, a city in the Ottoman Empire. But by what name do we now know that city today? There you go. That's question four repeated for you again. There, Kath. And question five. Which character from TV's Line of Duty is famed for saying Mother of God and Jesus, Mary, Joseph and the wee donkey? Question five again. Which character from TV's Line of Duty is famed for saying Mother of God and Jesus, Mary, Joseph and the wee donkey? So that's an easy one. Speaking of TV, I think we have a shout here for the shortest claim to TV fame that the UK Crime Book Pub Quiz has ever seen. <laughs> Chris, you were on TV for how long? Uh, I'd say probably less than a second. <laughs> and, and what were you doing in that less than a second? Well, I used to be quite fit and I, um, I joined a running club in, my, in a moment of madness and the the one show asked my running club for some people to come and like sort of run around a park for some sort of bit mm. um so i went thinking this i can get on tv with this and um they literally used my legs running past at a very low level and i did i barely recognized it except for i was wearing bright green socks um otherwise i would have wouldn't have known my legs at all so yeah the the worst claim to fame in the world i think <laughs> Being in a running club filmed on TV, just your ankles being on TV has got to be better than the sweaty mess at the end of the run being on TV, surely. <laughs> yeah, I think that is, you've, you've got a positive spin on that for me. <laughs> uh, Andrew, you somehow appear to have missed the glare of the camera. Uh, the only TV encounter you've owned up to was uh, sitting on one. That's true. <laughs> That's true. What, what, is there a story there? <laughs> There is a story there, uh, Ben, but it involved a lot of alcohol and nudity, and I don't think I can repeat that for your for your viewers of sense of the nature. There we go. Yes, um, that, that needs to be a private conversation if we ever meet up in, in an actual pub. I was going to say, if you ever see Andrew doing the uh, circuit on the festivals, there's the question you need to ask him: What the hell is happening on that TV? <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the answers and leave that um, mental image firmly lodged there for the time being. Frank Zappa's band, anybody? Frank Zappa's band. Uh, mothers of Invention. Yes, the Mothers of Invention, of course. Uh, or just the Mothers, as they were sometimes referred to. They actually changed their name from the Soul Giants to the Mothers uh, on Mother's Day, 1965. It's a nice little, nice little tie into the round theme there, I felt. Um, the book and the film. Psycho? Yes, Psycho. Who is it? <laughs> it is, yes. Yes, Psycho. Uh, there were, of course, remakes, but we don't talk about those. <laughs> Question number three. Um, 
did any anyone have a, an attempt at working out what the uh, colloquial acronym for Moab became? Is it Mother of All Bombs? It is, yes. You've got a roundabout mothers, a question about a bomb. You've just got to fill in the other two letters, really, the other two words, really. Uh, yes, Mother of All Bombs is the answer. Um, question four, much harder. You might get a wee clue from the sound. Ush, cup. Anyone hazard a guess? Istanbul? No, it was Skopje in North Macedonia was the answer there. Yeah, Mother Teresa, born 26th of August 1910, in Ushkop towards the end of the Ottoman Empire, which feels massively, massively a long time ago, the Ottoman Empire, but clearly not that long ago. Uh, and finally, who was the character with the quotes from TV's Line of Duty? Ted Hastings. Yes, uh, played by the wonderful Adrian and Dun Adrian Dunbar. It is, of course, Superintendent Ted Hastings, and now we're all sucking diesel. Uh, Chris, being from Northern Ireland, I assume many Tedisms weren't that new to you. Um, have you ever floated down the wagon in a bubble? <laughs> I have not, but I have been near the river. That is, um, he's a very good actor, isn't he? Yeah, yes. Um, and uh, yes, that, those quotes seem to have created a, a, a life of their own. Um, and... Uh, we also hope that we'll get the chance to see another series and hear once more pearls of wisdom Teddy's going to drop. Um, uh, Chris, being from Northern Ireland, Andrew, you're from up Teesside Way. I can't imagine many folk uh, looking for a dip in the teas these days. Um, although, you know, it's, it's a beautiful part of the world, isn't it, once you get past the smog and the coastline, which obviously is drawn into your writing? Um, if you went in the teas, I don't think you get back out because of how thick the water is. <laughs> Yes, it's um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's, it's a, a lovely stretch of water, but the coastlines are much different, and I think it's uh, I mean, lived there for a few years, I think it's uh, often underappreciated some parts of that uh, coastline up there. It's uh, it's well worth a wander. So that's my bit for the uh, for the North Yorkshire and uh, Wearside Tourist Board done there. Moving on, gentlemen, to round three, and unfortunately, round three has gone to the dogs. Oh, sorry, it's called Gone to the Dogs. Um. <laughs> To celebrate Crufts later this month, with five questions about dogs. You love him, isn't you? Guys? Some famous, some fictitious, some tenuous. Very tenuous indeed. Shall we begin? Yes. Yes. Question number one. What did Laker, a stray mongrel, become famous for in 1957? Question one again. What did Laker, a stray mongrel, become famous for in 1957? Question number two. David Davy Boy Smith was better known by which stage name? I might give you a clue there, because not everyone's going to know that one. Uh, he was a wrestler. You call that a clue? <laughs> it, it narrows it down somewhat, doesn't it? <laughs> Again, David, David Boy Smith, the wrestler, was better known by which stage name? Question three. In which city did Greyfriars Bobby guard the grave of his owner for 14 years? Love that dog. We won't even entertain the concept that it was not one dog, as some scoundrels will suggest. I don't want to hear that. That's really about... <laughs> the danger of doing research for online quizzes is that you find... Dreams get crushed. Story. Yeah. I refuse to believe that story. Uh, yeah. In which city did Greyfriars Bobby guard the grave of his own for 14 years? And he's certainly not an urban myth. How dare anyone suggest such a thing? 
Question number four. Released in May 1974, Diamond Dogs was the eighth studio album by which artist? Question number four again, released in May 1974. Diamond Dogs was the eighth studio album by which artist? And question five, Caroline's uh, husband seems to be doing well on this uh, quiz so far. <laughs> Who was the famous passenger on the second voyage of the Cherokee class sloop? HMS Beagle, between 1831 and 1836. That's question number five. Donna says she's too young for these questions. Well, Donna, I don't believe anybody was born in 1830. <laughs> you're playing this quiz. So I think you're in the majority there. Um, question number five again. Who was the famous passenger on the second voyage of the Cherokee class sloop HMS Beagle between 1831 and 1836? Laura Hamilton saying finally being subjected to the WWF thanks to Little Bro is useful. I mean, being <laughs> wrestling is always useful. Um, yes, who doesn't love the wrestling? Men in tights, running around, hugging each other. Wonderful sport, wonderful sport. Uh, speaking of uh, HMS or Their Majesty, in this case, Her Majesty, Chris, you nearly found yourself flattened at the hands of our Liz. What happened there? I did. Uh, when I lived in London, um, I was walking across a little street and suddenly like 10 police motorbikes came like flying past me. Um, so I sort of stopped in the middle of the street to just watch where they were going and they were going into Hyde Park and then a car beat its horn from behind me. So I sort of jumped off and the queen was going past me and she waved from her back seat. <laughs> oh, she the wave. Oh, she did, yeah. So I've been waved at by the queen after almost being knocked over. Did you wave back? Uh, I did, yeah. I was so like, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought there was a massive crime going on, which I was more interested in, and then it was uh, it's just <laughs> just a little it voyage. The queen. Yeah. <laughs> um, Andrew, has anyone famous ever tried to uh, to kill you, or if, if somebody <laughs> was, would you have a preference? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure it'll happen sometime in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and any any preference as to whom that might be, or or any inkling? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe um, someone has read one of my books and, th and thinks I've, I've, I've written about them but changed their name. <laughs> <laughs> now, is, is that something, I mean, obviously that's something you wouldn't have done. That's obviously not true. That's just a joke. There's no plagiarism involved in any of these. <laughs> <laughs> don't want anybody suing me. Excellent stuff. So let's all read through Andrew's books to find out who the famous <laughs> people are. Who's the, the name slightly changed. Oh, I love it. Excellent <laughs> stuff. Yes. Yes. Um, and we've all done that, haven't we, when we've written a book? We have all put someone in there, kind of dislike, changed the name just subtly, and then we off them. I have. <laughs> I've put <laughs> someone I really <laughs> like in a book. Mm -hmm. um, I, because I, I never dreamed of getting published, mm -hmm. um, I, I was just used names of people that I knew, and I worked with a man called Sean Corain, um, and I changed his name to John Corain. And he's the pathologist in the Erica Piper series. And he's, I love writing him because he's like knowledgeable. And so is the man I work with. Um, so it's, and he loves that he's part of it. So he's been safe so far. But yeah, he's a big fan of being in, encased in literary history. <laughs> and, and the day, and the day he ticks you off, that's it. Then, um, uh, yeah. absolutely. Just a, just a warning for you there, Sean. Just a warning. Um, <laughs> Laura Hamilton says she was temporarily blinded by the light reflecting off Karen Brady's diamond earrings. Uh, I can imagine they would be quite bling. Yes. <laughs> Definitely a danger for driving. So, um, 
we need some answers, don't we? Yes. Um, so 1957 and Laker. Who can uh, let me know what Laker was doing in 1957? Sent into space. She was indeed. Yes, Laker became the first dog to go into space. Well, the first anything living from this planet. In fact, um, I will put that from this planet um, in there just in case. You know, you never know. Uh, Laker's journey was sadly always one way. No one had worked out a re-entry process. So she was doomed from the off. Uh, Passing away from overheating after four orbits, quite sadly. Question two for the wrestling fans. David Boy Smith. British Bulldog. Indeed. Better known to fans of wrestling as the British Bulldog. His career lasting from the early 70s until the uh, noughties. Uh, sadly, he passed away of a heart attack in 2002, aged just 39. Far too young. Uh, Grey Fries Bobby. What city would we have found, Grey Fries Bobby? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yes, absolutely. Greyfriars Bobby famously stayed at the grave of his former owner, John Gray, a night watchman in Edinburgh. Uh, the artist behind Diamond Dogs. And Mr. David Bowie. Oh, indeed, yes. The artist behind Diamond, Diamond Dogs was David Bowie and featured the iconic Rebel Rebel, as well as tracks planned for Bowie's abandoned musical of the novel 1984, including track 1984. And finally... Five. Who was the famous passenger on HMS Beagle? Charles Darwin. Indeed it was. Yes, Charles Darwin, who wrote his journals and remarks, where he began to develop his theories on evolution. Uh, now, talking of science nerds, I can't not mention your uh, Alex Valentine character, Andrew, uh, and the Arcane series, uh, as well as your Elephant series. Uh, obviously, you've branched out away from uh, writing just uh, crime into uh, a very different genre, the supernatural. How do you sort of find that? balance between the two in writing the two um it can be difficult at times but um it depends how much preparation and research uh, i get into if i when i'm really researching the crime stuff then that that sort of tips me that way away from the, the more supernatural and paranormal things uh, it also helps when i'm reading at the same time so if i read a lot of crime authors then my brain goes that way if i read a lot of Sort of science fiction or fantasy, and my, my brain goes the other way, and it's sort of mix and match. But it's nice to it's nice to go between the genres because then I don't get slightly um, stuck in one. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, do you find it a catharsis to, to do that, to, to have that change of pace? Um, and is that are they the two genres that you, you plan to stay in, or is there any plans to go elsewhere? Uh, yeah, I, I originally was just going to stay for crime and, and thrillers, but. Um, I'm planning out a fantasy series as well for later this year. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Very good. And uh, Chris, uh, are you planning to stay just within the crime genre? I'm obviously you do cosy crime and uh, uh, and mysteries, but is there any plan to, to spread your wings further, or are you happy where you are right now? I quite, I quite like. I don't, I, I don't read. I don't think widely enough to go into something else. Um, when I've, I've sort of wrote six cosies in a row, um, and then I. I wanted violent death, so I've written a sort of um, a PI novel, um, sort of hard-boiled and lots of blood right from the start. So um, that's with my publisher at the minute. So we'll see if that if that ever sees the light of day. But it was a lot of fun after <laughs> after very safe and deaths off screen and things like that to get back into mm -hmm. yeah, a bit of bloodshed. Makes sense. So even within a, a similar sort of genre, you can still have that sort of air. Uh change of pace so to speak to, to yeah it's to, quite wide isn't it yeah absolutely yeah and it's a, yeah it's, it's a very wide genre i think there was a question earlier of, uh yesterday on the, on the forum actually about uh, what is viewed as crime over espionage books and so forth views crime and yeah i think the whole genre it's not just police procedurals there's cozy there's espionage there's hard boiled and there's so much that can be done within it uh, yes, so uh, I'm going to quickly ask you guys at this point for your scores, if you don't mind. Just to, just to ratchet on the tension as we get into the, the last couple of rounds. 11. 11. 11 as well, yeah. Ooh, neck and neck. So 11 out of 15. That's, uh, that's some good scoring there, gentlemen. Uh, if anyone wants to join us in the chat, let us know the scores. That's great. Uh, round four is where we're moving to next. And it is the music round, which I'm sure you both will be... Uh, Happy to, to hear because uh, you both uh, professed a love to music in your pre quiz questionnaires. Uh, five questions coming up here on songs based on books. Tying it into to the group. I'm going to be super nice today and I'm going to give you the artist 
and a selection of the lyrics. There will be no singing. Uh, <laughs> oh, sing, sing. I want Korea. Everyone turning off. Uh, I want <laughs> you to tell me the name of the book it's based on and the author for a point. Uh, and there's also a point if you can name the song. Who doesn't have extra points? Uh, you've got to get the author though, to get that extra point. Uh, as a fair few of the songs and the books have the same name. Uh, the research to find ones that didn't would have took forever. Okay. Does that make sense? Indeed. Yes. Excellent. So this first one is by Pennywise. And here's the lyrics. He's a monster. He's not human. He's more than just a figment of your imagination. You can't run. You can't hide. There's no escape. I would like from you the name of the song and the name of the author and the book. <clears throat> so, yeah, you gents are winning at the minute from the scores. We've got 10 is the best place in, se in uh, second and 8 and 3. So, yeah, Some good scores coming in. So, that one again for everyone playing along at home. Okay. So, Pennywise is the name of the band and the lyrics. He's a monster. He's not human. He's more than just a figment of your imagination. You can't run, can't hide. There's no way to escape. I'm sure Pennywise sing that song at a much faster tempo than I've just heard. <laughs> Question two. Kate Bush next. He didn't see that one coming. Out on the wily, windy moors, we'd roll and fall by green. I absolutely got that very wrong. In green, yeah. We'll do that one again. Kate Bush, out on the wily, windy moors, we'd roll and fall in green. Question three, Jefferson Airplane. And if you go chasing rabbits and you know you're going to fall, tell them a hooker smoking caterpillar is giving you the call. <laughs> book is that one there? Hey, Jefferson Airplane. And if you go chasing rabbits and you know you're going to fall, tell them a hooker smoking caterpillar has given you the call. What book? The name of the song. Question four. Led Zeppelin rocking out with this one. The pain of war cannot exceed the woe of aftermath. The drums will shake the castle wall. The ring wraiths ride in black. I can hear my mum squealing excitedly. She's probably just got that one. Not because she's a Led Zeppelin fan either. So Led Zeppelin. The pain of war cannot exceed the woe of aftermath. The drums will shake the castle wall. The ring wraiths ride in black. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed this one, Donna. And finally, question five, Elton John. So tired of this garden's grief, nobody cares. Old King kissed the small white cross, her only souvenir. See the Prussian offence fly. Weren't we grand to place the feel of cold, sharp steel in their hands? Tricky one there, but there is a wee clue in there. It's a tenuous clue. I'll give you another clue. It was also a film. There we go. That narrows it down. <laughs> I think it was two films. Oh, it was a remake, a Western remake, was it? Yeah, pretty sure there was a Western remake. So, 
So we will do that uh, last one again. So tired of this garden's grief, nobody cares. Old king kissed the small white cross, their only souvenir. See the Prussian offense fly. Weren't we grand to place the field of cold sharp steel in their hands? Three film adaptations. One that's coming out this year. Mm -hmm. There you go. Did not know that. Out of later this year. Um, while everyone's doing uh, their best to work those out, I'll post them in the chat. Let's talk about music here, gents, shall we? Uh, Chris, you're into your heavy metal and pop punk. What sort of bands are we talking about then? Um, well, Metallic is probably the best band I've seen live. Mm -hmm. um, Megadeth got me into metal. Um, but I also love a bit. I saw Pennywise last year at a festival, actually, that, um, that I think Cass was at too, Slam Dunk in Leeds. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I've been to see a band called Neck Deep recently, and they were great. Just live music again is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got my first gig in a long time. I was supposed to go to Shed 7 in December, but that was cancelled. And then I'm going to the music in uh, June, which will be amazing. And then Glastonbury. Uh, oh, nice. Finally paid that one off. I booked it years ago. I wanted to go again before I turned 40, but uh, yeah. I've been out of right ideas, and I'm going 40. But, yeah, what can you do? There's plenty of older people there. It'll be great. Um, and, Andrew, you say you like old movies and new music, so um, who should we be listening to right now? Uh, I was in Leeds on the weekend. I went to see Keeley Forsyth. Mm -hmm. What sort of thing is Keeley Forsyth? You know Keeley Forsyth, the, act, the actress? Oh, right, yeah. yeah she was... Um, she, she was in Deal and Pascal a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you um, if you um, if you know Scott Walker and, and Nico, it's that sort of thing. Cross yeah. between. It's very intense. Awesome. Makes your head yeah. hurt. In, in a good way. In a good way. Not in, a good way. way. in a good way. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you if you want to check that out, get a couple of paracetamol ready just in case. But... <laughs> well, the drugs oh, are. Oh. <laughs> I'm really exactly giving it a, a we we not. Um, and, and for both of you here. Um, does the music that you're listening to ever feed into your writing at all? Does does it influence you beforehand or does it inspire you when you're working? What is your music and writing arrangement if there is one? Um, I listen to not not any of that. I can't listen to anything with words. Um, but I do listen to bands like um Explosions in the Sky and yeah. uh, This Will Destroy You at the minute or I it's always the start in um song on my playlist and it does something like you know gets me into the, like this is your writing time now so yeah it's a real uh, a lot of instrumental sort of post-rock i guess you call it i would imagine talons would be in there as well perhaps mm. yeah. and then so i watch you from afar have you heard of them i've not no. um they're great they're from my hometown but they're they're doing good things um oh, yeah they're on there too Google. yeah that sounds like that's sort, of, sort of my bag and then uh, andrew what about you um is yeah, I, I listen to music all the time when, I, when I'm writing, when I'm reading. Um, a lot of, well, basically all my chapters are, are song titles. It's sort of, um, okay. I try to base them on themes. There's, there's a question, there's, there's one of the books mm -hmm. that I've uh, recently released. All the, all the song titles are Doors songs. Ah, excellent. Excellent. That's, um, what book's that one? Oh, it's a clue for someone to go and buy it and they'll find out. <laughs> buy them all the only way you're going to know there's one piece of marketing see? <laughs> Love it. absolutely great um okay then uh, the answers um well i'm going to guess that um chris has got this first one since he's been to see this band uh pennywise were the band uh i'll, I'll, I'll lean on you chris because it'll be funny if you don't know um <laughs> what was the song and what was the book and author well i assume it's it stephen king mm -hmm. And I think it's the song called Pennywise. Yes, uh, the, Pennywise was the name of the song by Pennywise, the band off of the album Pennywise. <laughs> About the clown, Pennywise. Uh, Do you want to know what book it comes from? Bunch of these, these Do you want to know what book it comes from? <laughs> yes, go for it. It's it. It is it, yes. And uh, Stephen King's It, yes. Um, Pennywise, the band, Pennywise, the song, Pennywise, the album, the subject being Pennywise uh, from It. <laughs> How do the points work now then? So you so get a, a point for each. So you get a point if you got the uh, name of the song and a point if you got the book and author because the song and the book often are the same. So um, two mark. Yeah, two. So two there's ten points. Lovely. Two points, play for it. Uh, question number two. Probably the most obvious book 
<laughs> um, crossover song in the world. Kate Bush, what was she singing about? Wuthering Heights. Yes, by uh, which, which, who was it by though? One of those Brontes. <laughs> one Emily. Of those, Emily Bronte, yes. That was that was the slightly tricky part of that one, I guess, was working out with Bronte. Well. Um, so, uh, Jefferson Airplane. What was the White song? Rabbit. Yes, absolutely. And what was the book and author? Alice in Wonderland. Yes, Alice, is, Alice in Wonderland or Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Uh, and Lewis the author, Carroll. Lewis Carroll, yes. I will also accept Through the Looking Glass because there is some crossover between the, the, the two books and the song, if you put that, because uh, uh, I'm just genuinely a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> Led Zeppelin, what was their song and what was the book and author that they were riffing on? This is the song's Battle of Evermore. Yeah, that's correct. And I assume it's Lord of the Rings. Does that have to be more specific? No, Lord of the Rings, J.R. Tolkien. Yes, and the Battle of Evermore was the song. Uh, the song itself, uh, like Lord of the Rings, is 16 hours long. <laughs> and finally, Elton John. With what, what I find is quite an interesting <laughs> choice of, of books for an Elton John song. Uh, any, any guesses? I'm no not idea. an Elton John fan. It's uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, oh, right. It's based really on the book by Eric Maria Remark, uh, book of mm. the same name. Yeah, All Quiet on the Western Front, Prussia being the, the slight clue in there. Uh, but yes, Elton John doing a song about uh, World War I. What that? song is it? Uh, the song is uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. All oh, right. <laughs> uh, right, we're going into the last round. So what are the scores, boys? I got seven on that one. Seven. What was it? Was it was it two points if you got the, the each question right? Yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. Maximum of ten. Uh, I got eight. eight. I got eight. Oh, just nudging into the lead there by a point is Andrew. So like, the pressure's on. Um Kaz says Pennywise cards would slam dunk, so uh, I agree. Oh uh, maybe it wasn't. Um you alive, Chris. <laughs> but no, I think she's right. Was it bad? Did bad religion take their place? I remember it being very loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it would have been absolutely, um, yeah, ear bleeding. Uh, right, we're moving into the last round, round five, which is general knowledge. Uh, says that the quiz here. That's right. Uh, no bookman told this month for regular viewers. Uh, it will return next month. Uh, you two can breathe a huge sigh of relief because it's a horrible round to write and to answer, and we will be seeing clear of any questions about that. Uh, general knowledge this month, uh, just to say we will absolutely be steering clear of any questions surrounding the war in Ukraine. I know that we say in this group that we don't allow political discussion, uh, but this guy is beyond politics, so I just want to say Slava Ukraine. Um, so yes, we will begin with uh, general knowledge. So question one, who has been picked to represent the UK at this year's Eurovision Song Contest? I saw the name today and I can't remember. I heard the guy today. I've written a question about him today. I've seen an article about him today. And until That's I saw the answers, I can't remember either. <laughs> he was on an article on Newsround, which I watched with my children today. <laughs> so there you go. And his name stuck with me. Nah, he see, didn't stick with me. And I, he's going like, to do well in the competition, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a poison chalice, isn't it? So um, <laughs> it's not even that good. Who has been picked to represent the UK at this year's Eurovision Song Contest? Question two. What was the name of the internet channel that became a sensation as it brought us live pictures from Heathrow Airport during Storm Eunice earlier this year? <laughs> thousands upon thousands of people watching... My wife called me a loser for sitting and watching that. <laughs> Have you got yourself a, an appropriate lawyer for the divorce proceedings yet? <laughs> we, we were all watching that. We were all watching that. That was great, wasn't it? It's whether you tuned in the next couple of days afterwards that makes you the true loser. <laughs> the switch from RF Coningsby was brilliant. I'm going to say. Um, question two again, for those who missed it, what was the name of the internet channel that became a sensation bringing us live pictures from Heathrow Airport during Storm Unites earlier this year? Um, question three, earlier this week, Disney released the trailer for a new limited series 
featuring which Star Wars character from the original and prequel trilogies? Question three again. Earlier this week, Disney released a trailer for a limited series featuring which Star Wars character from the original and prequel trilogies? Question four. The Brits took place in February, but what was unusual about the categories this year? Question four again. The Brits took place back in February. But what was unusual about the categories this year? And finally, a question I've been holding on to since September. Star Shakira was attacked and had her bag taken in Barcelona by two what? <laughs> Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe there's more to it than that. I I think I remember this. I saw it in or else. September. I thought it doesn't fit the Halloween quiz, then I forgot about it for November. Oh no, November was the, the St Andrew Thanksgiving crossover, and then it was Christmas, and then I forgot last month. <laughs> it's one of those answers if you stay allowed. You might sound really, really stupid. There's every chance. <laughs> so, pop star Shakira was attacked and had her bag taken in Barcelona by two what? Yes, they were thieves, but what else were they? People dressed like Lionel Messi. <laughs> <laughs> they, they would, they would absolutely be. Uh, they're everywhere in Barcelona at the minute. Just. Uh, Every chance of getting a game the way they're playing, to be honest. <laughs> so whilst we're letting everyone fill in those last few answers, uh, Chris, I, I want to ask you, uh, what's next for you and your writing? Um, I've been I've been signed to write six more in the Stonebridge series. Oh, um, awesome. they're, they're novellas, so they only they're they're about a hundred pages. Um, so. Six sounds madness, but um, yeah, they're, they're quite short, which is quite nice. So um, yeah, I'm I'm having to get myself in gear to write it, and I've, I'm in a real lull at the minute because I I I mean we talked about teaching before, but it's we've had parents evening, and it's just felt like there's loads, so I I cannot be bothered at the minute. So if my publisher's watching, sorry, um, I will get back on it, but yeah, so six six more Stonebridge. Amazing stuff, and Andrew, uh, the, the same to you. Uh, what's what's next on your agenda? Oh, I've got a, a book coming out in the next month. Amazing. Well, gone to Texas. It's the fourth in my Astrid Snow series. Excellent stuff. And then I'm going to write a sequel to Where the Bodies Are Buried. And, and what can we expect in the uh, fourth Astrid uh, Snow book? If you want to give it. Um, it's called Gone to Texas. So here's mm -hmm. a clue. She goes to Texas. And um, she gets involved in small-town America corruption and being accused of being a, a murderer. Excellent. Is the series set in America? Uh, no, the first book, it was called Don't Fear the Reaper, based on a song title. Nice. And, and um, that was set over here, but then she goes to America for the, for the next book, the second book. And then I kept her there for three books. <laughs> Nice. Well, is she is in any danger of finding a ticket home, or is a, is a green card uh, likely to expire? Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, we have to read the book to find out, Ben. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that is the exact answer we were looking for. More marketing tips. <laughs> <laughs> Super stuff. Right, let's get some answers, shall we, gentlemen? Um, did anyone, oh, Chris remembers the name of the, the singer from uh, Eurovision, so we'll, uh, we'll let him go for it there. Is it Sam Ryder? Apparently, according to my answer sheet, it is, yes. Sam Ryder, TikTok sensation during the lockdown, uh, now guiding the country towards yet another respectful nil poire. Would have been better if it was Sean Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke they made on Radio 2 earlier. <laughs> That's why I should have remembered his surname. That's all come flooding back to me now. Yes, it would have been better, Sean Ryder. I've heard the song, nil poire got all over it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you, you could put the Russians back in it and we would still finish bottom with that song. <laughs> Question two. What was the channel that everyone was watching on YouTube? Big Jet TV. Yes, Big Jet TV. Um, the channel that took over people's screens when they really should have been working. I was one of them. It was amazing. Uh, absolutely brilliant. And I, I still every now and again dip in and just see where they're at and what they're doing. I love planes. I'm not going to lie. Absolutely superb stuff. And if you haven't got Flight Radar 24 as an app on your phone, you're not really living. <laughs> Question three. Getting his own show um, with Star Wars. Who was it? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, old Ben himself, Obi-Wan Kenobi, once more played by Ewan McGregor uh, and then used this name. Uh, what was the new and strange thing about the categories this year at the Brits? Uh, they did away with male and female. Yes, uh, yeah. gender yes. neutral categories, basically, uh, doing away with the best male and female awards and so forth. Yes, everything was just best artist, etc., etc. And finally, who or what attacked Shakira? Can I guess? Sure. Squiddles. Squiddles is wrong, I'm afraid. Um, I think they talked about this during Champions League coverage, um, <laughs> which is hard. And it's stuck in my mind, but I could be totally wrong. So, well, husband, is it Boers? It is wild Boers. Boers. Yes, wild Boers. Boers. Two wild Boers attacked Shakira and her son whilst walking in a park in the Catalan city. Uh, she did manage to get her bag back from the Boers, who are uh, an ongoing problem in uh, Barcelona. Over 1,000 calls were placed to police about them in 2016. And in 2013... One officer, in fact, did try to take matters into his own hands and attempted to shoot one. But he missed and hit his partner. I think it's safe to say he made a real pig's ear of that one. Ooh. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what you came for tonight. So, um, whilst everyone totals up their scores, um, let's have a quick reminder, gents, where people can uh, go to find out a little bit more about you both. Uh, Andrew, where can people go to find out about you? Uh, my website is andrewsfrench.com. Excellent stuff. And Chris, where can we uh, find out about yourself? Um, I mainly spit into the ether on Twitter. So C Mac writes crime on Twitter. Um, yeah, seems to be the place. And I'm with an indie, so Red Dog Press are my mm -hmm. publisher. Um, and if anyone likes the sound of anything they've heard, it's it's you know if you want to support indies, which they need your support at the minute then please go to their website and uh, get something that'd be very cool excellent stuff yeah absolutely uh gentlemen scores please i've got a score of 16 a score of 20 a score of 19 coming in so some good high scores this week 21 for me 21 for andrew chris 23 23 <laughs> oh he's come from the back of the pack to charge into the lead and I think that's general gonna knowledge. Win it. Yeah, excellent stuff. Wild, wild balls and Eurovision song on this expert. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where he's, he's made it. He's made it pay. Yep. Honestly, I get most of my knowledge from watching news round with yeah. the children every day. <laughs> <laughs> they cover everything. They do. They do. John Craven, I presume, is no longer there. <laughs> um, gentlemen, it's been an absolute privilege to have you both with me tonight. It's been great fun. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I would also say thank you to everyone who's been playing along at home. Uh, thank you for uh, enduring or enjoying the quiz, whichever one of the two it's been. Uh, so thank you very much to Andrew French, to Chris McDonald. Uh, thanks to everyone watching at home. I've been Ben Bruce, and unfortunately, I still will be next month. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.